first of all, I want to say thank you. I think it's a pleasure to be here today, um, especially at a time when we are starting to see the importance of media being felt. Uh, so are all of you students of journalism, mass communication? All of you. So I expect to see some life because people who communicate are supposed to be lively. You cannot communicate to someone if you are frowning your face. And I want us to just think for a moment that we are not in a journalism class right now. I want us to feel that we are now in the real communication field. I have been in the media industry for the last almost 18 years. So what I'm about to tell you today or talk to you about is what I've seen firsthand myself. I've been able to experience it. And I want to look into the room and I want to tell you that you need to be able to open up yourself if you want to be in communication. Opening up yourself is trying to be in the mood to be able to communicate to someone. You cannot communicate to someone if someone who's communicating to you is looking at you in the eye, but you, you are busy either on the phone or you're not in the mood of listening to that person. So I want to request for your total attention. And for those who might not know who I am, um, I am Eugene Anangwe. I've been in the industry, like I said, 17 years. And through the years, I've been able to go through a lot of stages. I was once a student like you. I've studied uh, mass communication. I got a first class honors. And at that time, I was still working already. And I think what I need to tell you today is you should not be able to wait until you're done with school for you to start looking for a job. That's one thing I need to tell you. Because there are people who we've reached out under my company, and sometimes when we have opportunities and they tell you, oh yeah, the child quick. When I finish studying, then I'll be able to come and do the job. So for me, at a personal level, I started looking for a job or something to do even before I graduated. And what that says is that during that internship, during that volunteering stage, you are gaining experience. Because today, once you finish school and then you say, I want a job, the employer will ask you, where is your experience? Because at that time, you have not done any work. So it's going to be difficult for you. But if you have volunteered, then it is going to be easier for you to use that skill or those skills that you'll have picked as a volunteer to count it as your experience. So I wanted to start off from there, first of all, so that we can be able to understand what we are getting ourselves um, uh, uh, into. Um, a as part of my introduction, again, like I said, um, I've been able to study just like you. I was in classes just like you. And you can imagine sitting in a class and people are asking, why is he studying? He already has a job. He works at CNBC Africa. He has a show on Rwanda TV. He has interviewed the president. He does different things. Some people even thought that maybe I'm a spy in, in, in the school. They would not believe that I'm seated in that class looking for an education. And for me, what that did is I had to be able to have a very strong level of discipline. Because at that time, you're already working. You have experienced what is in real life out here in the media. But someone is seeing you seated in a class being taught by a teacher or a lecturer who sometimes is feeling uncomfortable because maybe they are not sure if what they are teaching is actually the truth or if you'll challenge that. But I respected each and every of them and I took the classes just like every other student. I would meet people in the corridors and some of them would think that I am a lecturer at that university. I was not. And I concentrated and I did my... Um, exams and I passed and so today I'm trying to pursue um, some level of, or more levels of education but as I say this in terms of education I need you to know that this is only to make you competitive on the initial stage of hiring 
if you're going to be hired for a job, the paper is to help you be competitive because everybody out here or a lot of people out here already have the degrees, they have the certificates. But what will make you different from them? What will make it easier for that employer to say, I'm going to choose you or hire you and not the other one? That's what you need to work on. And I think for me, I decided to try and push myself from a level of confidence and understanding what I wanted to do. And someone will ask, how did you even know that you wanted to be a journalist? I've met a lot of people, sadly, who have done three masters, but they still don't know what they want to do in life. They get to a point where they're telling you, Anangwe, I'm looking for a job. I have studied this, I've studied that. I have all those inboxes in my Twitter account and Instagram, so many places. And you ask them, what is it that you want to do? What can you do? And they tell you, I can do anything. I can do anything. And the moment someone tells you, I can do anything, there's a problem. With that level of education, there's a challenge. And I hope none of you in this room will get to that point where now you have your degree, you have your experience, but you have no job, and then you're saying, I can do anything. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is how can you do something with the level of education that you have even today. I started recording myself when I was still in high school on the radios which had the tape. I know we have a lot of Gen Zs in the room. They might be asking, what is that? There are radios which you can record yourself and you rewind the tape, the cassettes. And you rewind and then you listen to what you've recorded. So my mom loves those Jim Reeves, Dolly Parton. They're in that age. And so I would take her tapes and I would record myself. And when she would go to play the tape in, in the car, she would be enjoying the song and then all of a sudden the song ends and then a voice comes. And it is me. <laughs> I used to be beaten for that. I received a beating for that because I was messing up with their tapes. Same with my father. He loved Lingala music. And that time Awilo is playing Awilo Longomba, then boom, my voice comes, speaking as if I'm reading the news or presenting a show. But what was I looking for? I already knew what I wanted. So you need to know what do you want, even as you sit in this lecture today, what is it that you want? Are you just seated here because your parent is paying the tuition fees? Are you just sitting here because in your family you're the only one who has gotten a chance to be in university and so you're doing it just for the sake of the family? Are you seated here because you want to be a celebrity? Because if that is the reason, then there's a problem. Try to first understand what are your God-given skills, what are your God-given talents. I discovered that when I was still young and I was able to understand what I wanted to achieve or what I wanted to do during that time. Anybody would ask me, Anangwe, what do you want to do when you finish your high school? I said I wanted to be a journalist. So I was a school captain and every Wednesday, Friday and Mondays, we used to have the assembly and I would give speeches. And it is that time that I discovered I can speak publicly with confidence and encourage people. And so I built up on that and I wanted to now make sure that I do this at a global level. So you need to be able to understand what it is that you want. Even as you pursue this career, if you are, even as you get this chance to sit in these classes, what is it that you want uh, to achieve? So through my journey, like I said, I started off as a volunteer at a Christian radio station. It was called Radio Waumini in Kenya. I used to walk on foot sometimes, and sometimes my lunch was a lollipop. How many of you know lollipop? Yeah, bombo, yeah, around. You know it. That was my lunch at some times. Because at that time, times were tough. It's my sister who was paying my tuition fees in college. 
And so any little money that I would get at that point, it was always to try and support the transport and all that. So I volunteered for almost one year without any pay at Radio Waumini. And how did I even get to that level of volunteering? It started off with a visit to that radio station as journalism students. When we visited that radio station, there was a lady who was in charge of commercials, adverts, publicity, production. And she said they have a client who wants a male voiceover for their advert, a male voice. So the four of us in that class, we were told to read the script in the booth. So we recorded. It was about a hotel. And we were told whoever's voice will be picked, then that is the one that the client will go with. So after recording, I used to sleep with the radio by my side. I come from a, an area or a region in western Kenya. We are known for loving the radio so much. We love listening to the radio and eating chicken. So that's, that's, and I would listen to the radio throughout. Five in the morning, I hear the advert, and it is my voice. I'm listening to the radio, and it is my voice that I recorded that is playing. I went and told my lecture, hey, do you know these guys used my voice, and uh, they didn't even tell me, they, they have not even paid me anything, and it's an advert, they've been paid for that. One thing I'll never forget is what my lecturer told me. She said, Anangwe, it is not about the money. Go to them. Every time we used to go to, to record our projects, I used to ask for, for them. I used to record them on a CD. And I had all the projects we did in our class. I kept them. She told me, go and show them what more you can do. Tell them, you can do more than just that advert. I took my CD, gave the lady, they listened to what I had done in our school project, and one day there was an opening for a kiraka, just for a voiceover narration for a show that was being sponsored. And that's how I got in and I started as a volunteer. So what I'm saying is, today's generation, we do not want things the hard way. I speak to some people and they say, uh -uh, Nangwe, no, I think my parents suffered enough. I should not also suffer. Why should I suffer and my, my parents suffered? It is not my problem to suffer. I want it now. Some of us are here and you think you'll get famous immediately. No. It took me 18 years to stand here today. 18. So if there was a child who was born when I was starting, they would be now an adult and they're able to vote. In, in, in July. So it's a journey. So what happened through that time, Contact FM here in Rwanda was looking for people to help them start their English broadcast, their English uh, shows. And that is how I got a chance to be connected to Contact FM here in Rwanda. I had not yet finished, I had not yet graduated at that time when I was at Radio Wamini. I was volunteering but still going to school. And when Contact FM came, I was now in my graduation year for college, not university. And when I graduated, I had a chance to come over to Kigali. And it was not easy just deciding to come to Kigali. At that time, I had started looking for jobs. I was already looking for jobs in Kenya. Knocking doors. Saying how I'm able to do work for free. Just give me a chance. Those emails, I see them these days, I smile and I laugh. And so for me, coming over here in 2008, it was a manifestation of that effort, that journey. In 2019, I had a chance to set up a new TV station in Kenya. It's called TV47. For those who know TV47, you can find it on DSTV. For those who watch DSTV, it's also online. And being able to start a TV station from zero in a country like Kenya that has over 100 private TV stations, 100 plus, and that TV today is number three. Number three. It's official. You can check Google what position is TV 47 today as a channel 
in terms of viewership. Setting it up from scratch. I left Rwanda 2019. When I was given that chance to do it, I found young people just like you. They were interns from the University of Mount Kenya, Mount Kenya University, journalism class. It is them that were there trying to fix things, trying to do things. And I looked at them. And I said, I'm not, I'm not going to hire people who have the full experience from outside. I'm going to start with them. And when we started the first em employees of day one were those students of mass communication. So that's why you saw in the earlier slide, I scout for talent. So in this room, as we sit like this, you never know what I'm also looking for. I can tell someone's talent and be able to say, okay, I think this one you'll be able to go far. And there are those who probably will see, you see potential in them, they don't see it in themselves, and you try to support them, and then you say, okay, fine, you leave it at that. So I set up Team 47 from there, moved on to be able to set another project called Look Up TV. Look Up TV, when I was called to support them with setting up, it was a purely Christian TV station. And at that time, Christian TV stations had a very bad image in Kenya. Because all the time on TV, you'd always see they are advertising their Momo code. The pastor is always saying, send money there. It is your seed. It was always, people would say, uh -uh, these TV stations, they are not serious. So I told them we need to convert this station into a fully commercial TV station. And that is what it is today. And it is also uh, very sustainable in that case. My third project right now is East Africa Media Group that houses East Africa Media Group TV, East Africa Media Group Radio, and the Anangwe Mentorship Program. The, the Anangwe Mentorship Program aims at me also holding people's hands the way someone did for me. But I cannot hold your hand if you do not want me to hold your hand. So this mentorship program is for those who want to be mentored, who want to commit and say, you, I'm going to commit one hour, 30 minutes every week to be able to go through the mentorship program. So what happens through this mentorship program? I have people who come and they're able to witness the shows I do on the summit on Rwanda TV. If I have any production that we're doing, we are together. And you get to be able to see or experience it uh, firsthand. Um, in that one, two. Having said that, I was told to talk to you about the aspect of preparation. I wanted to first give you the background information on some of these things so that at least you can be able to have an idea of who or what we are going to be talking about in that case. So we're going to talk a bit about the aspect of preparation, but I will not go there directly. I'll first try to make you understand that media today is evolving. Media is changing. Media today is not the media of 2008. It's not the media of the past times. Today, media is going digital. Today, anybody can be a journalist. So you cannot come out of this school or this uh, university and say, I have a degree, so give me a job. There's someone out there who has no degree, but they are minting a lot of millions with a lot of views because they went straight to where media is going today. Today, mainstream TVs, mainstream media are struggling. If I even ask you today in this room, how many of you watched TV last night? Just by show of hands. Raise your hand up. You can imagine. Just two people. Three. People are not, no longer watching that screen. A lot of people today are not. Today, people are on YouTube. They're on Netflix, they're on the X platform, they're on IG. So what I want to advise you today is that you do not have to have millions to start your own media 
house or your own media platform. All it takes is a smartphone, a social media account, and dedication to start developing the content that you enjoy. Those 200 followers on, on your X platform or on your Twitter, that is your audience. The way a TV station is saying we have an audience of 5 million viewers or 5 million people every day, you are able to brag based on the number of people that are following you. If you want to do it seriously, you can commit and be consistent. I know you guys have been able to see Isimbi TV, you've seen Ijihe TV, you've seen the rest. Someone started just the same way I'm trying to tell you. If you don't have a smartphone, a relative of yours has it. Just tell them, please, just for one hour. Record your things, record your beauty tips, record your interview with someone, talk about something you enjoy, post it. Today, things are changing. AI is helping us in one way or another not to be able to wait to have so much resources to be able to edit. You go to Canva, it will give you a PowerPoint presentation, it will give you graphics. So take advantage of the changing times in that particular situation. Today you can be able to start your own platform and be able to talk to people and engage them on the things that you enjoy. So as I say this, I'm speaking from experience. Because for me, when I'm working, literally I am not. Because I'm doing what I enjoy. I'm not working. People look at me and like, Anangwe, why are you always excited when you go to the show? and do it? It's because I love it. But now we are moving to the next level. It is no longer about what you're passionate about. Because a lot of us are now passionate. It's about obsession. You've got to be obsessed. It's no longer about passion anymore. It's the obsession. This person is so obsessed with his work. He can't even sleep. He goes to close the eye, he opens back and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Let me go and correct that video. Oh, let me go edit this. Because you're obsessed with the work. So the, ne the next generation of media practitioners will require obsession to the work. Because passion, everybody has it. Imagine there's another university somewhere with three times the number of people seated in this class. All of them doing the same course, looking for the same job. Let me ask you, the last time you saw a TV station or a radio station advertising for jobs, Chera, a long time ago in newspapers in Kenya, we used to open the pages for vacancies. There were so many. They were looking for 15 camera people, 12 reporters, four anchors. It's not happening anymore. Because media houses, the, the traditional media houses, are struggling to be able to sustain themselves. So they are hiring in-house. If, let's say, I am a Munyama Kuru, I read news, but I know English. And they're starting a new talk show in English. It is me, internally, they will tell to do that show. So where will you get the jobs? I'm not scaring you. I'm not saying, oh, there are no jobs. But I'm trying to open up your eyes and ears for you to know those jobs, it is you who will create them. And you have the capability of doing it. Don't wait for RBA to post on their website that they are looking for employees. It will take almost five years, ten years for them to do that. I'm speaking from experience because internally what, what happens is they pick Anita, they say, Anita, we have a show that we want to do on Saturdays. You have a show on Friday. RBA Motomoto. They will pick her to do it. But yet probably we are out here thinking, maybe can they give me that job to do it? No. They are saving their costs. So my advice to you is very simple. If you're passionate about cooking, Please borrow a smartphone. Start recording yourself doing the cooking of the foods that you like. Put it out on your social media platforms. You'll be shocked. 
there's someone who needs it. Number two, research about what are the things that people want to see out here. You'll be shocked at the top 20 things that people are searching for. People are even searching on how to make a baby boy. People are searching on how to make pancake. People are searching how do I restart my computer that is frozen. Why? Because the media is not giving them that. So that's an opportunity for you to start such kind of content. Teaching people on how to do very basic things. Say, yo, yo, yo. Whatever TV, Step one, do like this. Step two, Step four, put some chemical. Step five, make sure the chemical is not staying there for long. So I don't want you to do it. Step five, voila. You show them the, the end product. Start. I'd like to be able to see how many are you? Almost a hundred. A hundred channels generating content. Number three, media houses are struggling to get content. They're struggling. They cannot do everything, the ones they've hired. They can't. So it is you to create that content. And create it to be so nice that they now say, eh, we are savichi for us to be able to have this show on RBA. What will it take? Or KC2. Put yourselves together as three divas. Three girls who look amazing and just say, we're going to start our, our show. On our YouTube channel. I'm happy because I'm seeing you guys looking at each other and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's coming through. Sit together. The boys are the, the men in the room. Why don't you start your own YouTube channel and start a conversation about boys to men? What are the journeys? What are the challenges? How is the today's generation understood or misunderstood? These are projects you can even do jointly as a university. And say during your free time or the clubs, you guys are going to do something about it. Media houses are looking for shows. They don't want to do everything because it's expensive, it takes time, it pulls the energy of that one reporter who again has to do another show. You say we have this show. And come to me, tell me, Anangwe, what do you think about this show? Can KC2 take it? I'll, I'll, I'll help you to modify it. Or can you take it on EMG TV? Is it something that we can work with? But it takes that obsession. It will not start just by you thinking it will be taken. Because out here there's a lot of competition in that particular case. Now, there's a lot of significance of the work we do. It's not to say that all is lost. Media will remain and will remain very significant. So you're not in the wrong profession. I know people who've been able to say, I'm here because I didn't study sciences. I didn't have a choice. I'm here doing communication. I know people who are like that. I'm just here. I'm just here to push. Or someone told me I'm so pretty and I think we, they're looking for pretty people to read the news. Or, oh, someone said I have a very nice voice. So maybe I can, I can do this. So I want to tell you, you're not in the wrong profession. All you need to do or all you need to know from the back of your mind, no one is coming to save you. No. There are no TV stations or available media houses that are just saying, we are waiting for you to, 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 to graduate. We have, we, have, we have kept this job for you. No one is coming to save us. What I used to do when I started the job at Contact FM, I had a show called One on One. If you go on the YouTube, you'll find it. And that show, I used to put in so much effort. Imagine a show that is every day, and every day you have to have a guest. Every day. For 30 days. 
different guests, different topics, which you have to research. And I used to do it. And the effort I was putting was because I enjoyed it, one, and I was obsessed with doing it well. Now, my target was to have this show or to have an opportunity to do something on the national broadcaster, Rwanda Television. And I did it so well that I even had the Director General of RBA come to that show. The aim was to show him, at that time, I have the capabilities of even working on RBA if there's an opportunity. So do what you do so well that someone says, hey, this show that you do reviewing bicycles or reviewing motorcycles or reviewing vehicles, what does it take to have it on KC2? Because it's a show we can, we can take. So you need to push yourself in that particular sense. There is need to also be very committed to what you do. It's not easy. I always tell people journalism is like military. Journalists, doctors, police officers, military people, you do not go in there if you have a faint heart. It's a calling. Now, someone help me to finish. Mutima Mezekutu. Huh? Mutima? Unaniwe. Unaniwe. Is that the correct Kenya Rwanda? Eh? Umutima? I want to hear your voice. Exactly. You need to have a tough spirit. It's a calling. Can you imagine when people are celebrating Christmas? You are not. You are actually reporting how they are celebrating Christmas. <laughs> when there's a holiday, Krista Damahora Vandi wari kuenjoying, wawe naguri kuenjoying, wawe kuriputing ukun wari kuenjoying. It's not easy. Then our work does not have timelines. It doesn't have uh, working hours. Let no one lie to you that when you're signing your contract and they're saying it's eight hours, someone needs to work for eight hours. You will not work for eight hours, my sisters and brothers. Journalism is when you're just closing your eyes to sleep. Telephone is Ni editor wawe. Hari breaking news. There is a fire somewhere, somewhere. You need to go and cover it live. It's a calling. It's December, festive season. You're being told, no, we have a, a partnership and you need to travel to Djibouti to go and cover that event while your family and friends are going for holiday. It's not easy. It's not so you get in knowing what you're getting yourself into. For the ladies in the room, and I, I personally feel there are more ladies in this room than the gentlemen. Let's, let's clap for the ladies. Let's clap for the ladies. Let's appreciate them. I, 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 I want to encourage you. You are also not in the wrong space. You're not in the wrong space. The advice I would give you, do not do what everybody is doing. Try to be unique. Try to be different. There's been a saying or a belief that ladies in the newsroom or ladies in journalism, they will want to do fashion shows or a show about cooking, a show about homes, a show about lifestyle. So I'm telling you, every lady who's in the media is doing that. But today, if I ask you, can you name for me even one female business journalist in Rwanda. Anyone? A female business journalist in Rwanda who is just doing business journalism. Do you know any? Huh? You, you know any? Uh, you're a journalist. Don't run away from the microphone. Okay, if I can think, uh, Scovia. Scovia. Is Scovia a business journalist? Journalist, business. Just shout, I'm far away. Huh? Who? Uwabje is Jeanette. Is she a business journalist? Huh? Evelyn Morero, is she a business journalist? 
business only flora fiona mutoni i didn't hear well just say it again fiona mutoni fiona mutoni correct can you go beyond that list can you name 10 is it possible it's difficult that is where you need to go if you are a journalist in this room and you are a lady try to go that direction you will make a lot of money my friend because there are very few business journalists who are ladies so focus on that ask yourself what does it take what does it take do i need to read study rich dad poor dad go research on the terminologies of business cnbc africa where i was the country manager just until recently we struggled to get business journalists not just women even the men so try not to do what everybody is doing try to be unique think of the spaces that have not been tapped moderators on the anango mentorship program we mentor and train uh moderators these are some of the sessions that we do it's, it's difficult <laughs> yesterday I was moderating an event the other day there's another one there are those that i just want to give away and say uh, uh, I'm, i'm not available for this and they ask me do you have someone we we want a lady so the name that will pop up most of the time is fiona mutoni and there's no other so try you can do it my dear sisters it's possible think about what is less done now there is where you go it might sound difficult but if you are committed to it you can be able to get there break those barriers break those barriers so i'm about to finish but i'm going to talk a bit about the elements of preparation you know someone asked me anangwe with all these panels that you moderate they come in different topics one day you're being told to moderate a panel about fintech tomorrow you have a, mo- a panel you're moderating about agriculture and the ecosystem and sustainability another day you're being asked to moderate a panel um about politics and different things so how do you do it and these days and and, and they follow each other you must train your brain to be able to adapt and tell your brain me that's what i do like this whole week and the coming week very heavy busy i prepare psychologically and i say we are in for a long ride we will rest at some point but for now you prepare psychologically in that case number 2 go and do research about what you're being able or being told to do the research is in different places one is either in the concept note of what you've been told but also in you trying to understand what is it that they want me to be able to deliver uh, in this particular uh, conversation so preparation has different connotations depending on the work that you're being told um, uh, to do but before i go deeper into that i want to see if there's any question uh, I'd, i'd i'd structured this to be very open conversation because i might think i'm telling you what i need to tell you but there's this what you want me to tell you or the questions that you want to hear from me in that case i want to open up the floor um so that if there are any specific questions i'm happy to respond uh, to each and every of those questions just just raise your hand up and you'll be given the microphone yeah so good afternoon uh, my name is ann bugwa um second year mass communication and uh, my question is about imposter syndrome i imposter syndrome where you're well equipped you have the knowledge you have the skills and you've already pointed out what you want to do but in some instances um there's that thing that's holding you back um believing that you're not you're not it i don't know whether you're getting it yeah so when you how do you deal with imposter syndrome that's a good question and 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 sometimes how i personally deal with it is always knowing that you are not yet there 
even with all the things I've done, the people I've talked to, I've remained humble. I've remained as a person who's still seeking more knowledge. The imposter syndrome, what it does to you is it makes you think that you've already reached. You're already there. So uh -uh. they see me on TV, so I'm not supposed to even say hi to people. Or actually that is a non-starter, so I don't usually hang out in that space. So you need to continue seeking knowledge. Learn and learn, relearn as much as you can. Like I said earlier, the media landscape is changing. So there's no space for you to really think you're there yet. So the quick advice I would give is always never feel you've already gotten there. I swear to you, there are things I do and people are, are surprised. I'm like, why are you surprised? For example, a small follow on, 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 on Twitter. Someone comes to the DM and is like, oh my God, thank you very much for following me. Oh, I feel so nice. Did you guys see who followed me? I mean, we, we need to follow each other. We need to connect. We need to be together. So the moment you start feeling you're there, it is the beginning of your downfall. So do not be a person who's always seeking to improve. Today you could be good. Tomorrow it's different. So what I do personally, I rewatch every show that I do. If there's a talk show that I did, last night I had a show we were discussing about um, inclusion, including women with disabilities during this month of women. And, and after the show, we are on the road going back home. I'm watching the show. Why am I watching? I want to see and say, if I had another opportunity to ask this question, I'd ask it differently. If I had another opportunity to interview this woman or this person, I'd interview them differently. When I interviewed the president, I had to rewatch it. And even up today, I'm like, if I ever got another chance, I would not ask the same way I asked. So not being in a situation where you think you've, you're there yet is going to help you in that case. Yeah. Yes, you have the quality, you have the skills, but once you get to what you're doing, you feel like there's other people who are better than you who can do this, and you're really not doing what you should be doing. So, in that particular situation, a lot of us get to that space where you are now feeling, am I in the wrong place? You remember when I mentioned in the beginning, you have people who've studied different things, only for them to get to a point where they're like, I think I'm not, in, I'm not for this. How you deal with this, first of all, is taking steps back and trying to find out who you are. What do you stand for? What are you good at? What is it that excites you within yourself? Once you're able to do that, then it is going to help you to be able to try and create a discipline of actually following through that which you enjoy doing. It will not go away, that imposter syndrome will not go away if you continue having that self-doubt. You have to be your number one fan. Be your number one cheerleader. But if you're going to wait for people to actually cheer you on, first of all, it actually makes things worse. It, it, it creates a bad situation even for that imposter syndrome that you're feeling within you. You'll be like, ah, they are right. I think I'm not meant for this. You wake up, you're like, ah, I think I'm good for this. Then you don't feel like you really, really have to do it. So first you must understand, what is it that you love doing? Get a support system. It could be your boyfriend, it could be your girlfriend, it could be your mom, it could be your dad, it could be a good friend. You need a support system. People who, who, who genuinely appreciate what you do. Listen to them more. It will even help you. Sometimes that imposter syndrome can also be a flag to just also tell you, indeed, you're not supposed to be doing this. You, you can be better in another thing it calls for you to have that meeting with yourself and do a self-evaluation. I, I do that a lot. I, I never stay at one place in terms of a job for at least more than two years. And some people ask, why? I always say, the day you hired me, there was something you wanted me to come and fix. So my work was to come and fix it. Once I've fixed it, can I go fix something else somewhere else? So until now that I have East Africa Media Group, now I need to stay because <laughs> there's nowhere else I need to go. So try to find yourself. Um, and how you do that is to find situations where you can be able to relook at your own journey, your career path. What are those things or activities or things that excite you more? 
then try to see how do you turn that into what earns you your daily bread. Uh, sometimes we are paid to just talk in, 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 in conferences. And, and not because you're struggling, it's because you love talking. So maybe that's what you love. And you can now start researching on how can I turn this into something that earns me a living. And you'll be shocked that people will be inviting you to do those talks and they give you something. Uh, and it's a journey. And then also you're allowed to also change. We cannot continue doing the same things the same way and expect different results. So you can always reevaluate your, your path. Write your 10-year strategy. Evaluate. How, where am I now? Am I seeing growth or am I stagnated? Then this, even if I love it so much, maybe it's not meant for me. And you discover something else that you love and there you go. So don't be afraid of trying out different things. So it's a two-way response that I was trying to give. So that now you can choose what suits your situation. The first question uh, is, uh, you gave an example of uh, Isimbi TV. Yes, yes. So, and I have recently heard that uh, it, re it reaches, I mean, one million subscribers. Mm. But the question is this. Uh, these days, the society, I mean, I heard that the society doesn't like the thoughtful person, mm -hmm. just, I, I, I don't know if I can say, the foolish talk show. Mm. They are the ones which attract the audience. Mm. And then, uh, the, actually, you have telling us the, the thoughtful thing, but the way to get the money is to deal, I mean, is not to use the wisdom these days. This is simply, it is called a uh, channel where women go and cry. Mm. <laughs> and then many followers are increasing. Mm. Mm. And the other channels are uh, of the guys who just talk about an in, an interesting things, but not thoughtful things. Mm. And these channels are being followed much. Mm. And after our studies or when we try to make a project, what, are, what is the advice of yours? Can we look after the money and we produce, you give that fresh product in order to earn, or we can be serious with our pro professional, whether we earn or not. Yeah. The, the other question, uh, actually me, I like Ijihe and Chigari today, the other, I do follow the others, but I say these are not very serious, yeah. because the, the trends are things in your go we go and we watch. They come with the slang, slang, slang and we go and we watch. Of course we do, but we do, for me I don't see the, they are productive shows. Yeah. So the second question is, are you the one whom I watch <laughs> having a long time ago contact the firm? Yeah. And once you had a show with a, a man called the Mugabe yeah. talking about yeah. presidential issues. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay, if so, <laughs> it is very interesting. Yeah. The last question is... <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, last, last question. It was to confirm. Yeah. Uh, the last question is the, the concern. Yeah. The concern I personally have uh, towards Kenyans. Yeah. Kenyans. Uh -huh. Kenyans in Rwanda, you are good at this communication. And the uh, issues of bank, many managers are from Kenya. But uh, once there was the rumor mm -hmm. in the Chigari Convention. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. Many people gathered the, uh, yes, for the jobs, rumor. To get a job. And the head, the head of that were Kenyans. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> many times we were, you speak good, but later we find maybe you have some other thing you are looking for or yeah. you want to just continue earning. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I don't know how you can help to get rid from such reputation. Right. And lastly, uh, if possible, uh, it is good that we are earning much and we, are, we, we can take you as the, uh, the role model. Yeah. But uh, I think you can prepare something tangible like a competition yeah. so that you even invest so that we can compete, we apply what you have been telling us. Correct. So th 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 those were really 
good questions. I'll, I'll, I think I'll start um, with the first one about um, quality um, over quantity. Quantity is views, then compromising quality in terms of the content. I want to advise you and tell you, look, don't be fooled by the number of views or the number of followers uh, to think that that person is actually earning the money. Money is actually even in things that sometimes people find unpopular. I'll give you an, a, an example of my own talk show, The Summit, on, on Rwanda TV, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. There are times when I used to do other shows like that. It was called Debate 4 and 1 and then In Focus. The show used to trend. Every night we are on, we were at number one trend. But the pockets were empty. So why were we trending? It's because we were doing things that were very popular. People were arguing. Hey, Nuowe, oh yeah, it's not you. People almost fighting on the show. But pocket-wise, there was nothing. I had to change the strategy. I'd rather not trend, but be watched by serious people who really appreciate that content. And a client has actually paid for me to host them on the show. So what I'm saying is development journalism is not popular, but it is where to go. What is development journalism? Development journalism is actually focusing your content towards things like the SDGs. It's not popular, but the UN has the money to give you to actually do such kind of awareness uh, programs. So what I'm saying is, one, don't give up on quality because you're afraid you'll have only five viewers on your video that you upload on YouTube. But if it is good quality, it has quality people who have actually watched it. And those quality people are very few. There are not many. So that's number one. Please, never compromise on the quality because you want views. Unless if your media channel or your YouTube channel is just about funny videos. Even if you go on YouTube today, videos with the most views are the videos of a cat just running because it's scared of a thread. A cat running. You'll find it has 20 million views. Just a cat running for five seconds. It's so akagozi, then it jumped up because it thought it's a snake. But you who has worked hard, looked for so-and-so, you hired a cameraman, big cameras, you sat down, you uploaded it, five months later you only have 24 views. It's, it's discouraging. So what I'm trying to say is focus on the quality. Please just make sure that the content you're making is actually in line with the audience you're targeting. Secondly, on the issue of if it is me who did the show, I think I answered that. <laughs> That's the show that I said. It's, it was called One on One. It was very popular. There's also Senderi on it. If you can, you can go and check. The last question about Kenyans, I have no control <laughs> over what or who does where. Honestly, but what I'm, I'm going to say is people are different. We are people with genuine hearts, genuine thoughts. And I want to believe that what one person does should not be something that affects the rest of, of, of the people. Uh, it is unfair. It is unfortunate that that happened. But it shows you also where people want. People are looking for jobs. But I'm trying to encourage you to try and create that opportunity for yourself. And you can do it. It's possible. I don't know if I've asked, answered your questions. Thank you. Ah, the competition is coming. We are planning a reality TV show. It's still in the planning phase. And we'll be able to invite different students to be able to join for the competition in search of the next TV star or something like that. I'll give you the details when we'll be able to be ready for that under the Anangwe Mentorship Program. Any other question? And we start wrapping up. Any question? Comment? Feedback? Something you've always wanted to ask me? I'm here. Or you want to ask me on behalf of other journalists? Yeah. Thank you. My name is Raisa Diane. I'm in Yatumas Communication. Uh, as you have said that we can volunteer to improve ourselves and our skills 
So here in Rwanda, as um, as the media house that we know that they are working in here, they are writing writing house medias and uh, also TV and radios. Yeah. But there is the rumors and issues about those medias. So we see the competitive medias that we we wish to be on RBA, mm. we wish to be on those KC2, this and this. Yeah. But when it comes to those, there are medias that we think they are unprofessional. So I don't, okay, let me buy an idea, but it is not that I can harass them. But when we see BTN, yeah. they are giving us news even if you are a student, you are not experienced that much, but you can see this is not going to be news. Yeah. And we want to improve ourselves. That's what we want. Mm. And when you go to RBA, they are not going to give us that chance. That chance. Mm. And when, even if we, can, we, we can't get chances when we don't have things that we have done. Mm. And we are still doing our project here, but they don't even give us that chance to meet them so that you can show what we have. So give us the uh, advice. Can we even go to those unprofessional to get this and this? <laughs> so you give us the difference. Where can we, what can we do yeah. when they are very different media houses and you want to go to the professional ones? What can we do? That's, that's a good question. I will not encourage you to compromise. You're not at a dead end situation. So do not go for I just did it because I didn't know what to do. Never be in, 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 in that situation, ever. So what I'd advise, it takes individual media owners to start fixing the problem one at a time. And that's what I'm hoping to do with EAMG TV. We are trying to see how can we be able to change the narrative about even pay for media practitioners. The pay is very bad, I'll tell you for sure. And so if pay is what is inspiring you to be in media, not in Rwanda, it's, it's difficult. Uh, uh, so what I would say is try to reach out to probably you know, people like us. I'm happy to be able to give the internship opportunities, the training opportunities. We are able to do it. And then it's very practical. So such a, an event, we had a trainee who was actually doing the interviews. So it's very practical. So I'm happy to organize a partnership that we can have some of the students go through the mentorship program under the Anango mentorship program. It's practical. Whatever you do goes on EMG TV, so you're able to even have something to show if someone asks you, show us what you can do. Um, about the um, uh, other stations not giving you a chance to even showcase what you can, it's unfortunate. That's the reality. Even in my days, Channels or stations that I had knocked to look for a job refused to give me a job. But after several years, they were reaching out asking me, how can you be our correspondent in Rwanda? We have a story in Rwanda, can you do it for us? And I was happily doing it. So don't give up. Keep doing good. Never compromise your good nature. Don't go down to their level. Stay up there. Someone who is worth your time and value will reach out to you. Do not compromise your quality. Any other question? Uh, maybe it's too early, but um, when you're considering doing further studies after you've done your bachelor's, um, for you to remain in the media um, sector or you try to branch out to something different, how does your um, choice in master's affect what you will do? So per se, you're trying to get into, if you have seen you're doing um, business, um, and how do you choose? How do you choose? Is it because you want to now um, branch out and become a business journalist, or is it that you want to get into business and like mm, journalism apart? Yeah. Masters means there's something you have mastered. So do not get a certificate and do nothing with that certificate and jump straight to masters. You'll, you'll really waste your time. That's my own thinking. And I hope I'm not stepping on on, on any toes. We have that challenge, people rushing to do masters just because they think it is fancy to do a masters. It's a personal choice, but my personal advice would be, please do something with what you've already studied first. Get to master it. 
master that that you've already studied. Then now say, I think I want to add the knowledge. Either because I'm targeting a certain job that I've seen the trend is that they want people with masters and I keep missing out on that opportunity. So that becomes that that now inspires you to go for the masters. Not because you just want it. So for me personally, I don't have a master's degree. That's why I'm saying I'm pursuing it. So why am I pursuing it? It's just for the competitiveness aspect. Not because of any other thing. I can do any kind of interview. Wake me up, up in the morning, I'll do it. I can manage an, a TV station, I can set up. So it's not because I can't. I've already mastered what I studied for before. So now I'm thinking I want to top it up for competitiveness purposes only. Nothing else. So that I don't miss out on an opportunity that it's only a master's degree that I'm missing. That's why they didn't pick me. So my advice is don't rush to do it just for the sake. You might spend the time. Then now you have the imposter syndrome. You've wasted your years. You've wasted opportunities. There's someone who wanted to take you somewhere. You couldn't because you wanted to study. Now you've studied and you're feeling like you wasted everything. So don't rush. First of all, master what you've already studied first. Then now do the master's degree. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, according to Wikipedia, we've seen that actually you are the founding uh, CEO of EMG Africa. I mean, EMG Group. And also uh, for TV47 and Radio 47. Also, uh, you've been worked for the CNBC Africa yes. up to 2022. Yes. And also, you are the host of uh, the summit at RTV. Yes. So, and I came to wonder, how do you deal with this? How do you all cover this, uh, these tough positions? Yeah. And up to now, you're still uh, like on top journalists in Kenya and North Africa. Yeah. So, could you tell us, please, one of the top uh, like three principles that actually help you to deal with this all? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. I, I have someone who inspires me in terms of the number of hours to sleep. There was a day I was interviewing the president and he said for him he has a very long, long day and less time to rest. He sleeps only four hours. Sometimes that becomes his maximum number of hours of sleep. Four. So if the president sleeps four hours, who are you? Who are you to sleep eight hours, nine hours, ten hours? If the president, four. And sometimes maybe he's not even sleeping. He's in a plane and he just rests a bit on the plane chair. That inspires me a lot. It makes me just stay awake. So that's why I'm able to manage all those things. The previous night, I was supposed to come here on Wednesday. I, 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 actually, yesterday. I was supposed to come here yesterday. I had an event early morning. I had an event. And the previous night, I had slept at around 3, preparing another tender for GIZ that I'm trying to pursue. You sleep at 3 a.m., you're up at 6 to be at the event by 7, you finish, you have another meeting at 4, and then at 9 p.m. you have a show on Rwanda TV. You sleep around 1 a.m. that same day. It's not easy. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to say is life or things will not come to your doorstep. You have to look for them. You have to fight. You have to, you have to know that it's not going to be easy. So all that managing, all that together is telling this person up here in this, between my ears, that look, we, we, we have to chase the paper first, the money, and number two, we have to achieve certain things before our time comes to leave and go and rest for long. So that's what pushes me. If the president sleeps for less than six hours, who am I to sleep for those hours? One. Secondly, I want to achieve certain things, so I have to push myself to get them. No one is going to give it to me for free. So that's the advice I'd give you. Then getting those leadership roles is being consistent in what you do. Consistency. If someone loves the way you say your name, 
on a show and that's why they come to watch. If today you said it the way they loved it and tomorrow you did not, they'll start saying, ah, na chijenda, na kunda gana gachivikor. They'll go somewhere else. So learn to know what is it that these employers look for. They look for someone who has dignity, serves with dignity, is passionate about what they do, is ambitious. When there's an opening and you have recordings like this, it becomes easier for you to compete. So please, always record. Get a recording of the work you do. Try to ask for a certificate of successful completion. Recommendation letter. Those things, you will need them 10 years from now and it will be hard for you to get it. Because probably management changed. They don't know you anymore. They can't remember who you are in which class, which seat were you sitting, who, who taught you. You will not get it. So anytime you do a school project, please take it on a flash disk, go keep it somewhere, upload it on the cloud, it will never disappear. The day you're applying for a job, please attach the kind of work you do. I'll, I'm saying this as an employer. I have I, sat in the panel for employing people. When you send your CVs, when there's a job opening for media, the CVs or applications we open and look at are the ones which have an attachment of a sample of the work that you have done or you can do. Can I repeat that? When you are applying for a job for a presenter at RBA or at EMG, if your email has just the CV and the cover letter and the gambo, I'm not going to look at it. Because the employer does not want to take chances. They still don't know you. They don't want to hire you, then you come and try when they've hired you. But if they can see what you can do from the sample you've attached, even if they have not yet called you, they have an idea of who you are. What that will do is I'll say, even if they did not record this with a professional camera or in a professional studio, this person is committed. They used a phone to actually record a sample. If we give them the cameras and a good studio, they can do better. You are the person who will be shortlisted. So keep the recordings. Always when you apply for a job, have a link to show what you can do. You can even record yourself on the phone and then edit it, attach it. It helps you to get closer to getting that job that you're looking for. I'm standing between you and your lunch and it's dangerous. So I want us to start wrapping up because I was told we are going for one hour and it's almost time for us to start going. So I'll open up for just two, three questions, if any. Any comments, anything you want to hear from me? I'm happy to respond. So thank you so much. I'm by the names of Isabel Sheila Lores, and it's my first year um, in the third trimester. So actually, thank you so much. It was a, an honor to, to have a, a conversation with you. And I actually don't have much to say, but thank you so much for this opportunity. Let's appreciate I usually teach public speaking as well, and I always encourage the trainees that I train that if the speaker has said, is there any question, never keep quiet. Raise your hand up and just say, I have no question, but I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity, and I think we can do more with such training. What that does is if there's a potential employer in the room, there's some character they're learning about you. Either that you are confident, either you really, really did take time to listen, there's always something that happens to you when you show up. It's like a virtual call. If you're in a virtual call, everybody has opened their videos on, on, on Skype, but you... You close the video. People are just talking, but they don't see who is talking. It's because, ah, I think I don't like myself. I don't want them even to see who I am. Showing up is always good. You never know who else is in the room and what they're looking for. They could be looking for someone like you. They say, that voice. You remember that advert we're looking for someone to record? Let's talk to her after this meeting and see. So you never know 
who's in the room. I always say that. It's the same thing I tell my journalists or anybody who's doing any show. You never know who's watching. Your next employer could be watching that show. So put in your effort the best every time. Someone from Al Jazeera could be watching that day. They're in a hotel and you come up. And they'll Google you and they'll start looking for you because of the good thing they saw you doing on TV. Always stay at your best. Can I? Yeah. I hope I'm not annoying people with questions. But um, you've said opportunities don't just find you at home sitting waiting for them. So as a person who has been in the field, you've, you have experience. Um, can you um, give us points or tips on networking and like selling yourself? Yeah, you know, placing yourself in places where you can get actual opportunities, meet people and such stuff. The first place is social media. Create a Twitter account, create an IG account, create a LinkedIn account, create a Facebook account, and then start positioning yourself through the content you post there. So if your passion is in leadership issues, if your passion is speaking out about current affairs issues, start putting your voice through those social media plat platforms. What that will do to you is it starts exposing you out there in terms of your position on such things. Let's say there's a debate going on about two new LS. You can now on your social platform record yourself and say there's this debate that has been happening and I want to say what I think about this. You now start becoming a thought leader on such topics. Who knows, one day they are calling for people to speak to girls in school or youth in school. You can be called to come because they saw you talk about it. So that's one way of doing it. And it's the easiest, your social media platforms. The next way of networking is taking advantage of every networking opportunity. But don't go for all. Also, sieve through what is quality, what, what is aligned with you. Don't go to a place where people are going to be drinking only, there's nothing. Not worth your time. But if drinking is what you want in life, then that's a place to go. So choose, choose based on what you really, really want. Um, thirdly is reach out to people deliberately. Social media has made it so easy for people to reach out to their icons, the people they look up to. Personally, I was just chilling one day and I see my phone ringing. I saw so many missed calls. The next time I'm calling back, it was someone from the president's office. And he's asking me, Anangwe, have you seen what Mzee has said? I'm saying, okay, wh which Mzee? Wh what are you talking about? And he said, check Twitter faster. I go on Twitter. The president has tweeted and is asking me to follow up on something. I think you guys remember there's a girl called Wendy Waeni. Wendy Waeni was, was an acrobat, a young girl, 11 years. Chera, Chera, the, the small girl who was playing acrobatic. Kenyan. She wanted to meet the president and she had been promised that by the president that she would come visit in Rwanda. So she had been following up on that trip for almost five years. It had not happened. And so she tweeted and tagged me and tagged the president. And the president responded and told her uh, and, and actually said it's possible we can actually do this and asked me to actually follow up uh, on that. So what I'm trying to say is that you never know who you can be able to reach out to. I wanted to uh, just put it here. Um, just one second. So you never know who, who is actually following you. Uh, in that case, that's what I wanted to say. If it, 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 if it pops up, I'll show you. But you can reach out directly to people who you really want to network with or you want to hear something from and they can be able to reach back and be able to help you um, with, with exactly what, what you want from them. So if you want to talk to, let's say, the Minister of Youth, Minister of State, she's active on Twitter. In any way possible, you could reach out and, 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 and be able to ask. If you have an icon who you really like, like, you can go in and be able to talk to them or ask them what you really want them to, to help you with. That's, that's what I would say. Any other? Any other question?
next next time okay all right so can i say thank you for the opportunity and also request that uh, if you have a phone um you can go on x uh, or twitter and 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 just search for my twitter handle i would love to connect with you it's going to be easier for us to uh, remain in touch if you have any questions if there's anything you'd like me to support you with if there's a project you're doing um i'm happy to help you uh with that so you could look for um at am eugene anangwe at am eugene anangwe and just follow i always follow back you could also look for at eamg tv and it will we will be able to connect also in those levels so i'm happy to support you in in any way uh that is possible in in that case uh, once you're there please let me know and if you need anything i'll be happy to help this is the tweet so i added it in my cv by the way that i ran an errand for the president of rwanda so every small achievement you make please celebrate yourself you are your number one fan and no one else will come to celebrate you in fact the people who follow your steps or to try and know where you are and how you're doing are majorly those who want you to fail they are always just checking did did they fail yet so there are very few fans of you and what you do so you have to be among the people who love yourself and be able to support yourself um in 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 that case okay so i'll end at that and i think i want to say thank you for making time in all those uh situations we've worked together on okay can i hand over back murakoze chane thank you very much i hope it's not the end the first or the end i want to see more of you in the media houses Uh, out there or in your own platforms i'll be the first person to follow you and appreciate you thank you again thank you